twice I've done that. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see you. I, right I come up and I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, this road switched colors. And <laughs> it's you green now. And you have to go back to get out of here. They they didn't design this too. Oh, there's a there's a roundabout up there. Usually they got that blocked in, don't they? Yeah, that, that escalator would be blocking your way that way. But, uh, if you go up here, ah. there's a golf cart. Uh, Something we, we put in the middle to really annoy the employees because they got to mow that little bitty stretch. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> well, you don't have to do it anymore. You get that cool shirt. Yeah, yeah, not me. <laughs> no, we have some garden work to do in the summer, but no mowing. They make the people that cook do gardening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, wow. starting in April ish, we have a. On a uh, 200 square foot plot of land. That's kind of like mean, isn't it? <laughs> no, we spend, we spend uh, half an hour pulling weeds and again, that, that's day. not your specialty, is it? <laughs> uh, that's no. why I'm, I'm finding it's, it it's weird. Part of it. yeah. It's part of it. If you want to be a cook, you gotta understand like uh, cooking as a whole, from from like everything from what you're what you eat eats. To like like what you're feeding your baby pigs and you're gonna eat to like how you fertilize your vegetables because that's where your your preparation for your plates start uh, so, and then taking care of the ingredients right so they got you uh, milking the cow to get the milk too <laughs> no not quite okay not quite I've been to a couple of farms um, Smith family farms we get Ber Berkshire hogs we get whole hogs in so we break those down once a month probably yes did that many times in my life. Yep, get to go to the farm, pick out a pig, name it, <laughs> get it, dead later. It's lots of fun. Got some really good tuna in right now. Oh yeah? Yeah, I caught, um, yeah, if, uh, my chef has a contact with some long line fishermen in West Virginia, I think. West Virginia, one of those coastal east is West Virginia or one of the Carolinas. But we get tuna. Our tuna was only caught the day before yesterday, and we got it in yesterday. Well, that's not bad at all. Gotta be better than chicken and sea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> way, way better. It's good enough that you can just eat it while you're breaking it down, you know? Ah, uh, now see, I'm one of those type of people that's got to have some sort of flame touching it. Yeah. Just. Well, we serve it, like when we serve it for the entree that we're doing, we, we sear it, but it's just crispy golden brown on the outside. It's still pretty much raw in the middle. It's good. It's good. Uh, I, I, I'm that, I like my food cooked. I've tried sushi before, and again, I look at it and go, you know, can you cook it? <laughs> I know people like it, you know, and I've, I've some tried things. I just look at it and go, you know, I can put that on a hook and catch my dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Every right over there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that, by the smell, I know I'll cook dinner with it. <laughs> But I, I, I made beef tartare. There you go. Then again, I was like, yeah, I tried it. Now can you go cook it? <laughs> I, bet, I tried it. I prefer to cook, please. Oh, that's good. It's hard to find like good beef for tartare. Like I prefer like a like grass fed. Um, and see, I want to know when they started this weird stuff of that, because. When I was young, we raised cows and everything. Yeah. They were nice. Ang well, we crossbred. We crossbred Angus with Charlotte. Okay. So you get a great, big, heavy cow. Yep. <laughs> but all meat was basically an Angus cow. Well, it's starting to change because, like, uh, those type of cows, you, you slaughter them after, what, a year? Yeah. 18 months or so at the max, right? Uh, they're finding now that uh, those people are playing around with Food and, and what makes the best beef basically. They're finding that the cows older than five.
five years have the best tasting meat. So if you can take care of them, that will, but it's just that like the beef industry, that's not a fast enough turnaround. No, it ain't. To like feed a cow for five years and to like take care of it and then give it antibiotics and everything that it needs to get to a five-year-old cow that you can eat. It's a lot of work and money. And like, all of ours were grass-fed. Yep. Winter time, they were, I mean, it's still a grass, it's hay fed. Yeah, yeah. And they went away from that to uh, the others, and now it's like, oh no, we want the other back. It's like, didn't buy from small farmers. Most small farms still do it that way. It's when you get to the bigger ones, but then also, you know, people say, well. Yeah, they're, they're creating that market right now. Restaurants like ours are we're buying from small farmers as opposed to you know buying from IVP uh, Iowa meat packers. So it's like the, yeah. the same place that like McDonald's gets their beef. Yeah. We don't want to support something smaller. We don't want a big conglomerate corporation controlling one one part of the process. Now I've seen some say, well, we we like the bigger ones because the uh, animals yeah. are confined mm -hmm. they don't get as much muscle yep and they say muscle is not really it's tender you get grass fed they to walk around all the time well, yeah they're walking around even if they're confined cows tend to sleep standing up they tend to stand up their whole lives and they will lay down yeah, even like within that you uh, if you know where your beef is coming from and how it's treated like if it's been walking around, it's going to be a little bit less tender, so you're going to have to cook it longer. Like as long as you know where it's coming from, you can you can end up with whatever you want. And I think that was stupid that the country did away with the identifying where the meat comes from. Stores. Oh yeah. Well, a lot of them are forced to do it now because of the the push for local food and people well, yeah. wanting to know that stuff. So like places like Walmart even are putting where their produce comes from. So like that's a, that's a if a, a huge company like Walmart is starting to you know pay attention to local mm. the, like buy from local farms for their stores in that area. Then, yeah, well, it, I feel it's, like it's on the right track, you know. It's, it is better. Just what? I don't see why we need to have meat shipped in from China when we have it. Exactly. Be a little bit more self-sufficient. We're behind by 20 years for the self-sufficiency. We, we got a little far ahead of the rest of the world. We thought we were hot shit. And then, and then China got lazy. Bought, yeah, and then, and then China bought Tibet. And Tibet is like uh, basically uh, the, the the Yellow River, the river. Uh, what's the other one in China? The, the other big river in China. Uh, the, they start from Tibet, basically in the Himalayas. So China bought Tibet or forcibly took Tibet so that they have control over where all their fresh water comes from. That gives them control over all their natural resources, making them completely self-sufficient. We don't have that. We, we get all of our oil from foreign countries, all, a lot of our water from... With our clothes, everything. Yeah, like half, half of our water like is owned, uh, a lot of the, the springs that a bottle of water comes from are owned by Nestle Corporation. That's, yes. a, that's a Swedish corporation owning you know, American water uh, aquifers and stuff. <laughs> There's a few bottled ones that, that I've seen where, and they're, they're smaller, they're not none of the big fancy names. Uh -huh. You go to smaller towns or local areas, you'll see where it's actually a city making it. Okay. Because you'll flip it around back and it'll say bottled by, and basically it's city water. They're not saying it's natural spring, but you know how people will just not yeah, all. You just gotta be careful of like if it says bottled by and it has like the city name, that's fine. If it says like bottled under the authority of, and there's a, a corporate name there, like yeah. this or something, then you know that, that it's, it's owned by something yeah. else. No way, no. But I always get the kick out of it, you know, everyone. And I'd seen somebody that had one, and it was coming from a whole different state, but it actually wasn't. I mean, you could read the bottle. It said it was by their own water company, so it's kind of like Peoria. It's got its own, you know. You're buying Peoria's water in a bottle. 
it said that, and the person's like, oh, yeah, I only drink natural water, blah, blah, blah. Man, read the bottle you got. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, well, I didn't know that. It's in a bottle. It shouldn't be some city's water. Why can't it not be? Screw that. Uh, I'll pay $15 a year for a burn of something. I mean, I, I drink my water at home. And I have people, well, why would you? I pay for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right up there, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a filter on mine to take all the metal and crap taste out of it. It's like, I, I pay a m monthly amount for it. Why would I not use it? There's just so many. No, no, no. It's got to be a plastic bottle. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's sewer, 15 is water. Yeah, I get pay for my water bill <laughs> a lot cheaper for what you're paying for a couple bottles. Yep. That's about it. But I can say my city water doesn't taste like most bottled water. Nah, Peoria and uh, <laughs> Creek Court are horrible, horrible water. They, they tend to over... Um, chlorinate yeah and that's big with mine it's like oh my gosh you could smell it yeah even like my fish tank like uh, when I have to change the water on the fish tank I let it sit out for three or four days you know to get some of the stuff out of it before I add it but it's still like the the water filter on the or the yeah the water filter on the back of the fish tank is just like hard water deposits all oh, over time. calcium and whatever whatever the fuck else is in there you know? and I can't drink our city water straight. I gotta put some sort of flavor in. I don't care yeah, what no, it, it is. It makes, just, me, makes my stomach hurt if I drink like right out of the tap. Just something. It just does not taste the same. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's too much this, too much that. I understand the city's doing it. It's the last thing they want to do is get somebody sick and they gotta shut all their water down. Turn out to be Detroit or something, and pfft. so they make sure it completely meets all standards. Those standards don't mean it tastes good. Yeah. yeah. And then the way it gets there, most water lines were made with metal pipes. Metal will put a taste off onto the water. Yeah, especially these. 75 year old water pipes that they have going to the town. Yeah. It's black metal pipes. Black metal will corrode. It will get a flavoring out of it. Yeah. Now, if you get to a newer town, it might be all plastic by now. different plastic taste to it. So it'd be more like a water bottle. Okay. Oh, the, 
been out there? I'm just being curious. What about all the country? Yeah. Uh, it's been about two years now. Because that is, I mean, I never knew it was there until first time I picked someone up, and that was really cool driving right back there. Yeah, yeah. I you like hit it. that a good solid foggy night. Mm -hmm. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hidden back there because like the the drive with the golf course looked really amazing when the snow was on the ground. Like all the holes in the trees and stuff, it was gorgeous, covered in snow. The, I can't wait for the summertime. Our uh, groundskeeper guy is really good at taking care of the grass. Cause see, I seen it and and I don't know, cause that's members only, correct? Yeah. So they're not a big fan of somebody like me just coming by and taking pictures. No, I doubt they care. Well, cause, see, the reason I ask is I, I have a side business of aerial photography. Oh, yeah? Well, like with a drone? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah? That's cool. And golf courses and stuff like that do really look cool from the air. Hey, yeah, man, if you get in contact with them and say, hey, yeah, I want to <laughs> do, uh, I want to take some pictures, like, for your website where you do some flyovers of the holes, you know, and like get a yeah. good shot of that, the approach to the green, or you know, like your first shot on the fairway, like any of those cool, like they, they might even pay you for that, you know. The drones are super cool. I've been thinking about getting and buying a, the first person camera, like a racing drone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like building it from the ground up because they have those kits. Yes, they they do have them. You have like the, the VR headset. No, I don't. I do. Person. I just do. I use fan, phantoms and inspires. So like I just do for the photos and stuff. I okay. don't do the. I know a guy, and I got to give him credit. Mm -hmm. He he was a wedding photographer. And he's like, well, you know, we'll get the drone. That'll happen. And then he realized, well, not too many people want wedding videos of sounding like a weed whacker in the background. Yeah, it uh, kind of bumps out a wedding party here. I mean, it sounds like a loud weed whacker. Yep, yep. So the, you know. <coughs> but he ended up creating something. Ah, you gotta give him credit. That was the coolest thing I ever seen the first time he done it. He uses his, and he works it into the reception. He'll do a few pictures of that, and then he rigs it, and, and I don't know how he gets it in, but it turns out to be a party favor for the guests. <laughs> He's got one of the first person viewers. They put that on, he takes it up, points the camera to where it's looking down, yeah. spins it. Oh, that's cool. And you'll sit there and watch the person watch it, they'll be watching, and you'll just start seeing them do this. <laughs> then they just fall over. <laughs> Because it is that accurate, it makes it feel like you're spinning. Yeah, and they will just line up and tip him, give him money left and right to watch each other get knocked over. <laughs> and I'm like, now that is cool as heck. You made a game out of having a drone. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos. There's a guy, there's a, a handful of guys who are making cool videos with their first person racing drones. Yeah. But, uh,. Yeah, these drones are nuts. Two mile range, uh, you can fly like 45 miles an hour. And, and the, the videos that they're taking, it's like you're flying. Yes. And it's like shoot straight up a tree and like flip over upside down, do a couple flips and rolls and then drop down towards it. It's insane. But eventually that is going to get really tightly regulated. Oh, I'm sure. Well, they just had a guy in Vegas do the ultimate stupidity with it. Went after a 747 with it. With his drone. Yeah. With one of the first person viewer ones. And he recorded, and there was two of them. So there were two guys that did it. One was behind the other, so it was recording what the first drone was doing. Yep. And they were both doing illegal chasing, running directly into 747s. Yeah, I just want to fly through some trees. It's a right way to and it's like, really? You're on purposely doing stupid stuff so the rest of the world is going to get their right. uh, butt in a sling. I just want to fly through trees and like shoot it through tiny gaps, you know? Yeah. Those like narrow, close cuts. What most likely, and see, I'm on a committee that is in Illinois because I was one of the first ones to get licensed. Mm -hmm. 
and we go to various cities that are trying to pass laws and do stuff like that to say, this is what you're allowed to do. Please pass it this way because if you pass one that you're not allowed to do, we will come back with attorneys and make so your life miserable. Is the license based like if your drone has, you know, if its range is this far or if it can go this high, then right you need now, a license to fly it? It's not really a license, it's a certification. Uh -huh. You and have hobbyist rules and then you have non-hobbyist. Mm -hmm. Non-hobbyist, you have to have the certification. Most people say that is commercial. Yeah. And it pertains mostly to commercial. The hobbyist, man, right now you got to do whatever you want almost. If you're close to the airport, you just got to call and tell them I'm going to fly here. And they can't tell you no. <laughs> And the biggest thing you have to do is follow some organization's guidelines. Yep. It's basically their safety rules. And that's all there really is. I mean, but if you do something unsafe, you're causing more problems. And eventually, they're going to make it where hobbyists is only going to be able to. Right here. This one here? Yep. Where hobbyists are only going to be able to fly in certain parks. Yeah. I've, I've and that, that. that is stupid. To, why do you want to make it that difficult? I can never, but. Nah, it'll all work out. Everyone will get what they want. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good night. Yeah, you too, sir. Thank you for the ride. No problem.